I want to bring special thanks to our Heavenly Father. What happened this week? You guys that were not in those meetings need to go and grab the whole thing. Do your own three days convention. What happened there? All of us knew that the equation has changed. Lift up your hands and just bless God and thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Just thank him. Destinies are going to be altered in a couple of minutes now. Destinies, permanent, permanently. Destinies are going to be altered. At the Gabor story, you know, what I'm coming is to conclude what God has built throughout this week. Just put the finishing touch on it. This is the pattern. And what I do is that God has given me grace to do conversion. Is at the point of conversion that manifestations and visible results show. I will bow to, to you, you to no other God but you. you.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is going to be doing a mighty work of deliverance here in a couple of minutes. You may be seated, my friends. God bless you. Glad to see you again. Put up that scripture about mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. But begin from the verse where he said, no one can serve two masters at the same time. One of those idols that always seek to dethrone God in the human heart is money. It gives a sense of invisibility. It gives you a sense of that you can handle when you touch a little of it. There is a series of these idols. One of them is power. Especially political power. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other. Or, if you don't have an out, outright hate for one. There are two scenarios that can, when there are two people in your life, if there are two guys, if there are two ladies, you hate one and love the other. Usually when you start this girlfriend, it's your wife that you start despising. But if it's not an outright hate, this is what it's going to be. You despise one and honor and give more attention to the other. That's what is going on with a certain men now. It's very easy to dictate when your spouse is having an affair. You will notice. They don't enjoy you anymore on the bed. They tolerate you. They're enduring you. You will notice the respect vanishes because they now have admiration for somebody else. You might not have caught them. That's where you can now set the trap and begin to monitor where the problem is coming from. There are a few scenarios where there are health problems, there are other issues going on. Yes, but in the normal setting, the heart has been turned away somewhere else. It has been stolen. And this is exactly what God faces in his relationship with us. Because God is a covenant-keeping God that is loyal and faithful. He never cheats. It's us that constantly cheat on him. Sometimes it's our career. Sometimes it's one relationship. And he probably was the one that blessed you with that relationship. Other times it's Satan that put that relationship just to distract you. But there are cases where it is even a God-given relationship. Because when Adam chose Eve over God, that was what destroyed everything. It was God that gave him this woman. But now, God lost out in Adam's life because of his wife. There are idols of relationships. 
there are idols of gold, money, money, money. And some of us, you have not even started, just a little few millions. That's what is messing your head up. There are idols of beauty. Now you know, you think you are fine. It has gone to the head. There are idols of talent. That's why we call them idols. You see talent show, they call them idols. They are truly idols. The power of idolatry in the heart. The idolatry of the heart is the worst form of idolatry. It's worse than the one where you mold something and you're bowing to it. The way you dethrone mammon from your heart is through sacrifice. The way you learn to die to self is through sacrifice. The way you learn to enthrone God as first in your life. You say, God, you come first. Money comes second. Career comes second. Lie. It's true sacrifice. It's when you are given the option, choose between this and this. Let one go. That's when. And you will see now, you see when the heart is lost, you see even in such relationship, it probably it comes up. It has been discovered. Now make a decision now. You see him trying to protect the one that has stolen the heart. I have seen things. They will connive and lie, deceive, connive, and not only that they cheat, team up, swear it to each other to lie, to deceive the one that is the rightful partner. Because that's where their loyalty is. They can agree to swear. Now they've caught us. Let's just say the thing just lasted for only one week. That we are just starting. That we have not done anything. They can agree to lie. Now and he has caught us. Let's say it's only once we kissed. Because the loyalty is still there. Wickedness of the highest order. Because somebody's loyal and committed to you. And do you know how God describes an adulterous woman? He says it's better for a man, if you want, I'll put it up. A man that is like a man attacked on the road by armed robbers and they stripped him of everything. That's what an adulterous woman is like. It's the highest form of robbery you do to a person. That's the kind of robbery we do to God, strip God of his glory, of his place as not only our creator, our God, our Lord, and humiliate him as one of the things in our lives. You don't like it when anybody does that to you. You don't like it when a girlfriend does that, when a wife does that, when a husband, and now you do it to the one who is meant to be the ultimate. Let me come over to the other side. Why does the Bible, almost everywhere you turn, everywhere you turn in the Bible, you see the subject of sacrifice. The reason is not so I can do that and believe God for a car or believe God for a job. Yes, you can get a job, but you can actually use seed faith to get a job. You can use seed faith to believe for a car. Sacrifice is another order of giving. The purpose of sacrifice in the scripture. Get this once and for all. Anytime you want things that money cannot buy, drop lower value in exchange for that higher value. Anytime you want, you want to solve a problem that human activities, human wisdom, human solution cannot solve. You have tried. Doctors have tried. Maybe connection has failed. Sacrifice is what you need to go for. There is something that gets people out when they hit a road where all the human thing cannot walk. For example, when a man is 100 years old, like Abraham, the wife is 90, 
You know that both medically and humanly speaking, that it's not possible to have a child. Sacrifice can resolve such issues. There are complicated things people go through in life. This one, we get back to her, she's mad. Now, two, whatever, the kids after that, we have the brother, is also mentally unstable. And this thing seems to be running in the home. How do we deal with it? You are running around pastors after pastors. Stop wasting your time. There is a book you are carrying. It's God that wrote that book and he has answers to everything. The problem is you have been blind. You are listening to social media commentators. What has all, all these infidels got to do with revelation of the living God? You will not find any man in the Bible who amounted to something without sacrifice. Not from Abraham to anybody. You will not um, find any man in life in the kingdom who amounted to anything without it. Nigeria, for example, has over a million pastors. Why is it that when you want to count the ones that carry what is called doga? Now, the glory of God is sometimes written and expressed when you look at the Hebrew word as weight. You know, you can have beautiful container, but when they shake you, it's just noise. It's nothing inside. And it's the empty ones that make the biggest noise. But this is something that is weighty because it has substance inside. Where are there few? Why is it that the Pastor Debo Tithes are few? Why is it that the Oedipus are few? Why is it that the Pastor Davids are few? Sacrifice is what sorted every one of these people out. Why is it that the Idahosas are few? Sacrifice is what separated them from the rest. If you want to remain where you are, stay there. There are things that you cannot get. And let me also warn you, if you cross over to the devil's side thinking that it's going to be easier, what he even demands is extremely more costly. The kingdom of God administers two kinds of, you know, benevolence. There's two kinds of blessings they confer on people. On one side is what is called common grace. And those are things that God made free. In nature, you see them sunlight. You see rainfall. Check the wizards in Port Harcourt. Rain falls for them just like it falls for pastors and ministers. Check even the worst people in Port Harcourt. Rain falls for them just like it falls for believers. They are common grace, God's general grace. That's where salvation is. That's where forgiveness of sin. The only condition they have for forgiveness is just that you repent. But then now there is on this side things that God doesn't give to people freely. It is now for those who pay the price. It, they are given only on the basis of covenant and sacrifice. Those things are on this side. You can attend church for one million years, you will not touch it. Until you go. Because one of the things that sacrifice also does is death. The man that puts sacrifice on the altar dies. And then he goes through what the seed goes through. He resurrects. And when he comes out, they put him in an enlarged space where his new world cannot be compared to who he used to be. These truths are no more being explained to people. What is going on is there is this money, money thing everywhere. When sacrifice is practiced correctly, it doesn't just produce a change in a man's circumstances. It brings that man into marriage, into a place where he knows God on a close range. Because God opens that curtain and draws him in. The man's life is the first thing that is changed by that. And then his circumstance and his world. That's how I got here. If you hear my story, what I went through, even in ministry, until this truth came to me. That's how I produced this PCJ you are seeing. 
Go and see even the people that were more whatever, better than them who were ahead of them. They had senior pastors. That's how I produced Pastor Mike, for example. That's how I produced them. It got to a point where I had to take them to the altar and tell them, do there what Isaac did. Do there what Jesus did. When you lay yourself there on the altar and die, what you're going to have, there is nothing else. You can't go below. You're only going to have resurrection. See, do not fall into the ground and perish. They go there to experience transmutation so they can come out on another dimension. Because when they go, they go single. But when they come out, what comes at that tree is what has capacity to be producing this thing in multiples. That's what happens to the man that goes to that altar. You see, Jesus said it differently. He said, except a corner of wheat falls to the ground and die, it remains alone. If that limitation stays. If you can let it experience death, then that's where multiplication comes in. The reason things like salvation is now made part of the common grace is that somebody used sacrifice to purchase it and move it to that side. Salvation cannot be bought with money. Sacrifices only get you, they used to get those things that money cannot buy. Salvation is one of them. You can get it with money. But you get it with sacrifice. So now, I can use sacrifice to get something and transfer it to my children. And now they are enjoying it free. It doesn't mean it was, it's free. It just means I have paid the debt. The issue of breaking of courses and breaking of foundation cannot be resolved with money. It's sacrifices that resolves that. For example, when you say Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, the curse of the law cannot be resolved with money. Some of you have families where things are happening. Nobody's making anywhere. You don't resolve it with attending church. You don't resolve it with singing. You don't resolve it with offering either. My spiritual father is about 73 now. He's worked with God for more than 40 something years. He's a direct son of Piotin. When Piotin married his second wife because his first wife died somewhere here in Nigeria. He was the one that he mandated to go to England and bring him that second woman. And so on the day of the wedding, I've seen, he has shown me all those pictures. You see that he was one that his best man, it was his son, but it was his best man. He said to me, Piety said to us, when you are tired of suffering, go to the spiritual world and purchase. And my head said, I wonder, why did he use the word purchase? He said, purchase for yourself spiritual power. Real power is not available on the free market. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is. It's common grace because Jesus paid for it. So you can talk in tongues, but pull somebody out of the wheelchair now. Speak to the sun, let it stop. Speak to rain, let it hang. If you want to now walk into because power is not one of the common grace. A all uncommon grace, all those things that single people out of the multitudes are on that other side. They require a price. Luke chapter 16, there is a parable Jesus told about an unfaithful steward. I think Pastor Yomar talked about stewardship, and who knows, he may have even made, you know, referred to it. What happened is this guy was corrupt. He was stealing his master's phone. I don't have the time to read it. I will just give you one or two verses. Stealing his master. When the report finally got to the man, he said, oh yeah, it's time to come and give account because you are not going to be steward anymore. You're going to be sacked. But there is something about sacking somebody and still leaving him in charge. You have made up your mind that he's going to be sacked. You have already told him. And you didn't remove him immediately. You leave him there for another six months. So the guy now got and started scheming. So do you know what he was doing? To plan for life after he's kicked out. So see what he was doing. He would go to this one. They supplied things like owing. You're owing two million to the company. He said, yes. He said, please write in the receipt. Just change it to, to 500,000. You see the other ones, I'll come after who will now settle. 
I will remove some things for you. You pay me the other one into another account. He will go to this one. You are owing our company 10 million. Uh, just adjust that to five. Uh, the other five, keep it. When I come, I will remove some percentage for you. The original cost will charge you. I will let you, but you pay me this one into another. So he now went after the different people owing his master and did all this. So Jesus told this story. Everybody was shocked. He now said, the Lord commended that unjust servant. Please put up that part. This part confuses believers when they read it. He said, the master commended the unjust servant because he has done wisely. And I said, Lord, are you supporting corruption? He said, no. So what is going on here? He said, it's what the unjust people do, I want to use it to teach you what kingdom people should be doing. Because down there, he said, the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of the kingdom. You understand this? They do it in government. They do it in politics. My time to leave office is approaching one year. They start. Okay, we, we've done first term. This is now second term. I think now we have to prepare for after government. And they start all kinds of things. And now they are awarding contract to people they had certain agreements with. So they don't want the money traced to their account and they are awarding it to certain people. And it's, yeah, when we come, you, you, pay, you can go open this account offshore, put it there, those, it's not in my name, but you know, we have this agreement, you will get 10%. He that is unjust in unrighteous mammon. He that cannot be faithful in handling money. And he that is unfaithful in little will be unfaithful in much. Look at it. He that is unfaithful in that which is least is unfaithful in that which is much. He that is unjust in, in the least is unjust in much. Do you know what God is calling least money? He said this is the smallest form of value in the kingdom. Because gold, when you get to heaven, is what they used to tar streets. You guys produce oil in this part of the country. When they get crude oil, they remove different values, higher values. Aviation fuel, gas, petroleum for driving your car, kerosene, and they keep going. When they have finished, that leftover, the bitumen is what we use to tar roads. So that's the one you should have thrown away. You know when you do refining of anything, the excreta, like what comes out of your, your body when you go to the toilet, you throw that away. But that's what God uses. God refers to money as poop. So he said, if we're going to give you the real value, real wealth, we have to check if you can be faithful with quota. But if we give you poo poo and you misbehave, we know now that true riches should never near your hands. You are stealing shit. Stealing. God now knows that he can't give you the real stuff. This thing that people are killing themselves and dying for is the least thing in the eyes of God. It doesn't take him just like this. He can change your world. Just like this. And there will be, watch, PCJ, and you guys watch, you will know that the man of God visited your city. You will see, be, be after this service, the kind of things that's going to happen in many people's lives. I'm not a new person on this subject. So look at the next verse. 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? What? Through riches. Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of sacrifice is to use it to exchange for those higher values. What the Bible calls true riches. The problem now is that modern day preachers are no more presenting those things to people. They have brought people down where they are now scrambling for crumbs, going after the mundane things. It's now money, money, money everywhere. That's why Christians are misbehaving. 
They are as corrupt as unbelievers. Some of them even dabble into killing people because of money. Women are selling their virtue because of money. Do you know that moral virtue is one of those true wealth? That it is so costly and so high that money can buy it. That's why the Bible said concerning a virtuous woman that her price is far above rubies. Go and bring gold, go and bring precious stone, I'm true. You can't buy her. Portacot women sell themselves for 5,000 5, 15,000. That's what you reduce the image of God to. Yet another woman, another woman, kings, president, governors, are ready to kiss her feet. They will say, name, is there a house in the U.S.? Is he in Dubai? Is he how many jeeps? And Esther, even when they say king, you cannot go in. She goes, the king stands up to come and say, come and kiss my hand. One thing about obtaining those higher values or true riches is that you can convert them into the lower values and keep your wealth still there. You know, for example, now, when they give you one million dollars and one million naira, which one will you take? Why is it that you want one million dollars? Because you can get hundred million naira and you have not yet touched your money. You can get ten million naira out of it and you, you still have your real wealth out there. So I want to know about this higher value is that they are convertible to material and material equivalent, yet you have not. For example, my wealth is not car. That's why you people see that I'm not crazy about such things. My wealth is not uh, what kind of house or what you are driving. No, 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 no. That's what Jesus meant when he met the woman of the well. And he wanted water to drink. And the woman was doing small shaka, talking about whether you are racist or you are a Jew. He said, listen, if you know who is talking to you. I carry things that save nations and save presidents and save governors. It's pastors that have reduced the kingdom of God to a level that dogs are now trampling on it. Sacrifice is how you exchange these mundane things and get things that money can buy, and then you exchange a little of it to have all the material things you need, yet you keep your true wealth. So you see, when Esther did that exchange, he, she moved, because what she had was virtue. She moves into the palace, got everything any girl is dreaming for, yet remained a virtuous woman. Whenever you exchange higher value to get the material or the mundane, you sold your birthright. You are a son. You are a fool. Because what happens is that what you exchange with when you eat it, and that's what African nations are doing. China people will come and say, I will do stadium. You go and take your coal mine and give them. Coal mine that will take care of generations to come. You sign it away. They say, we will do uh, whatever for you. You go and take your oil well and give them. And when they come to ask, because they are Jacobs, they don't ask for things that will just last for you. They ask for your birthright. Right? That's what China goes for. When Jacob and Esau were negotiating, Jacob understood the power of a birthright. That one will take care of him till he dies, continue to take care of his children because that is what Abraham had. Abraham gave it to Isaac. Isaac now is trying to transfer it and Esau did not know the value. So we are raising an Esau generation now in the church who are selling away the future just for temporal pleasure. That's what is going on now. Christianity in Nigeria needs reformation. The priesthood, number one.
So when you listen to that, you see that Jesus is not condoning corruption. Warning against unfaithfulness in unrighteous man. God uses it to test whether he can entrust serious things to you. But then he made a statement in verse 9, and here is what he said there. Listen. I say to you, make for yourselves. The way that man used that money eh, to secure his future. That's the illustration. He wants to get a lesson out of that. And now transfer it to the people in the kingdom and show them what they should be doing. He now said, I say to you, Make friends with unrighteous mammon. So that when they fail, because money fails, anything material is not true wealth. That house, fire can burn it. Just electric spark, and you come back from work, your house has burned down. That car, just one accident, is gone. Number two, and robbers can collect it. So that's where your security is. That money, that inflation can wipe out. Before, when I exchange it, the value is one million. But now, policies of government are exchanging and value has reduced to 300 and something thousand. The same money I kept in GTB. See what inflation can do to what we are calling wealth. So Jesus, in talking about it, said, put your stocks, put your world where there is no inflation. Put it in heaven. And that's what some people are asking. How do people do that? That's what they do with sacrifice. Why you need to keep some things here because you are using them. But you need to put it in an economy that is secured. So whenever issues come, you convert. But leave the thing in a secure. So you say use unrighteous mama, the lower value to buy yourself eternal habitation. So that when they fail, when money fails, when circumstances change and it's adverse against you, they will receive you into eternal. The bank where you invested can come to your rescue. Just like that guy, when he sacked he will now go. Those people he empowered can now come and bring it, and he is not down. There's even a lesson again from there. Whenever God blesses you, make sure why you are there, you empower a lot of people. If God gives you power, political power, empower a lot of people. If God gives you spiritual power, empower a lot of people. If God gives you intellectual power, empower a lot of people. Because there's something about this world. This place is transient. If a governor comes here and takes a thousand youths from Port Harcourt and turns all of them into billionaires, that is legitimate use of government funds. And you cannot shut that down. Neither can anybody go after it. It's different from getting somebody to hide money for you. Stop using corruption. There is a legitimate way to achieve the same goal. I don't think you are hearing me. I don't think you are listening. Stop using corruption. That is Satan's own whatever. There is a legitimate way to achieve the same goal. What you want is security after office. Take 10,000 River State youths. Turn all of them into billionaire with the power of the office. And when you finish, you, you invite EFCC by yourself to come and check the books. They say this is the best governor Nigeria has produced. See what he did. He did road, but he invested in human capital development. Everyone say that again. Human capital. When they have finished and everybody has now agreed and they give you a clean bill, do a retreat. Take them to a corner, invite the 10,000 billionaires and said, you guys have seen, I came out clean. I didn't take anything. But I now need my own future because I have family and daughter. What do you think will happen? 
We dare do something or not. What do you think? That's what Jesus is teaching here. Now, that's why I tell our pastors, you all guys can have aircraft. I can be riding bicycle. It doesn't bother me. There is something greater than success. It is the success of people you may help to become successful. And then by this time, probably one of those boys is another governor. One of them is probably senator this. One of them is even this. One of them is that. And then they say, is that, oh, sir, I have road whatever. I'm awarding this one for you. You are no more in office, so nobody can disturb you. Make all the money you want to make. This one will come and say, I do this. I bring it from China. I'm giving you 50 whatever. This one will say, this is what we did at Butte University. We're giving you so-so whatever. This one will say, that is the wisdom of the kingdom. That's why God took himself and multiplied in you, his image. That's why Jesus took his glory. He said, the glory you have given me, I have given them. That's what I do. That's my secret in ministry. It's not about me or whatever. It's about what transformational effect I can produce in the lives of others. Truth now be said. When this life is over, God doesn't reward you for how many cars you drive, how many houses you live in. He doesn't care about all those your useless things you call world. What he cares about is the impact you left on the lives of people. If you're a fake pastor here, hear the word of the Lord. Change! Because you will damn your soul here, you will damn your soul in eternity. If you think ministry is just to go and make money, repent! And the same thing with any other person, whether you are in government or whatever. It's the level of value you added. The man who empowered a thousand youths. But if you go to his account, what do you see? Is probably 500,000. Is richer than the man that has 500 billion and did not help his neighbor. He is just a rotten corpse that people are spraying perfume on until the day they stop. Because that privilege, that time, that stewardship will end. Just a corpse that they are trying to maintain. Like Jesus calls some people walking dead. In case you guys don't know, I hope you know, as some people you see now, saw them this morning, by night they are gone. But they died when you saw them, but they came out this morning. You know, it's over 50 something million people that die every day. For example, in the realm of the spirit, you can kill a person and he can still last six months. Witches can finish somebody and it still lasts two years. But what you see there is carcass walking around. Do you know the disease alone can finish a person and it can last six months? Sometimes doctors with the equipment, so they will say you only have six months to live. The man has already died. If he now has sense, he will use that six months to talk about what happens after death, to plan his family plan and all that. Some of them won't even understand. They will start going for new party, want to go and carry fresh women. So there are rich people you see now on their way to poverty. And there are poor people you see now on their way to wealth. It's about this mystery of exchange. Because what God calls wealth is value, not paper that you call money. That one is probably one medium for exchanging value in the natural realm. If you have something that is of value, in time and eternity, that one is ranked the highest. But if you have a, some form of value, even in time, and people need it, it solves people's problem. People's problem, it means, means that's what is called wealth. To teach African 
case, word creation is not to go and rob somebody or to go and steal or to go and do for one. It's to use that same brain to start creating value, start creating solutions. Something that solves problems for everybody. Something that everybody needs. And there's even another way. Sometimes you are not the creator of the value. But what you do is that somebody has created it, but he exists somewhere, and people here need it, but he's not there. You become the bridge that brings this from for where it is to the people that need it and put your own price in between. So, Echo, the musician, chop my money, chop my money, I don't care, we be square. That Echo, that's what I'm talking about, it's an African, is building a 21st century city now called Wakanda City. Everything there is automated. It's a city. I'm not talking about a house. But what is he doing? He's, he's seeing the, the need of housing in Africa. Instead of coming, thinking about giving Africans trash like every other African, he knows the Africans have the same appetite like any other white man. That we want good things. But the problem is who creates it? So he's building that. And when the Senegal president saw the level where this guy took the thing, he said, I'll give you all the land free because this thing will go down. That is my government that made it possible. He said, because when they come from abroad, we give them land free, build shop, we give them this. And now somebody from here is thinking like those white people. Everything is automated. It's... it's it's like a little heaven. I went to look at what they designed there. It's wonders of the age. His friends, uh, he made friends with Dubai Prince, with even the visionary behind Dubai. And after interacting with them, he has come up with his own in Africa. The first man to attempt it in Africa, a musician, a musician. While his colleagues are pumping it and shaking it, he's thinking about problems. Akon has a vision. Africa is one billion to give electricity to 600 million Africans. And he's not a talk. He has already covered 16 countries. And he's not bothering about urban centers where government tries. Like what? He goes for the rural areas. Their need of light is not much. Just to run their radio, to light in the night instead of candle or lantern and all of that. And that's, and of course, whenever you get value, you give it in exchange. That's how you convert. There is convert. You get, and then what they give him back is money. He's not doing it free. That's why it's called social entrepreneurship. It is mixing, instead of social services before, where you just come and waste money. It is solving social problems with business wisdom. Clap well, if you want to clap, clap well. When what obsesses you is healing your world, is solving the problem of your world, is saving your world, when what drives you is how to add value to other lives, then your real life will begin. What happens is that while you are living a self-absorbed life, my, my wardrobe, I need to change wardrobe, you are dead while you are living. What makes that sun up there relevant is that it's constantly giving out that light. Solar energy. There are stars that are bigger than the sun, that are stronger than the sun. But every now and then, something happens in space, and it creates what is called a black hole. A black hole happens when a star, the sun is a star. When a star starts its own gravitational pull, becomes so strong that it sucks up all the light inward. And then it disappears, but it still exists. Nobody sees it anymore. Because it doesn't shine out anymore. And then, they say it's the death of a star. When you own it, the me, 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 so strong, you forget that you can get anything you want in life if you can help enough people get what they want. It is the value you create or the value you add multiplied by the number of people you serve it that decide how well do you are.
So when it comes to this light in Africa, what he did is he found that Chinese have created a solution, solar solution. And then Africa is where it's needed. So he went and became the, the middleman. Bring it, because any man that creates value has another problem. He needs to market. So anybody who can go, you go to somebody that has value, don't go there, you have cement. But there is a part of the country or a part of Africa, they don't have this thing. I will be the one that takes it to them. You, sometimes that middleman makes more than the man that created the original. I don't think you're hearing me. Jesus has created the greatest value mankind needs, salvation. And ask you and I to go and do the marketing. And what did he promise? He said, he that suffers with me will reign with me. You will get the same thing I got from my father. And many of us, as he's saying, there is no job. As he's saying, there is no job. And he told the story of a man that went to employ people. Early in the morning, 6 a.m., he employed some. He came out again around 9, saw some people hiding. He said, why are you hiding? He said, nobody has employed. He said, there's work to do. Come in and get busy. Two of you came out, saw some people. And as, they told us the close of the work around 5 p.m. in the evening. Work will close by 6. He came out again and saw some people hiding. He said, come over and get busy. And he said, what I paid those who started 6 a.m. is what I will pay you who is just going to work for only one hour. Do you know that the same value that he is going to pay Peter and Paul is what he's going to pay us that are the eleven hour laborers? Why are you stay idle? Why are you stay idle? Saying there is no job. Looking for who to do. Looking for 419. And Jesus said, he that reaped, harvest, souls, received wages. You can take your anger to hell when a pastor has been blessed after suffering. When God has blessed him, is when his car arrives, his house arrives, you get jealous. But when he's suffering, you don't care. To hell with your stupid anger. Every form of productivity is rewarded with value. Clap, clap, oh, clap. You think casting out the devil, he sees it. Come and try. If you think healing the sick, he sees. We are the ones doctors refer cases when they are tired, when they can't handle it. It's us. So if you get these values correct, you can solve problems that doctors not can solve. You solve problems native doctors can solve. You solve problems government cannot solve. then what kind of value, weight, do you think that man carries? That's why when you start looking at the true riches, one of them is anointing. When you start looking at true riches, one of them is wisdom. See that thing? Solomon went to the altar. Put it up. First King chapter 3. Let me give you a few examples of what sacrifice gets you. You can't get it with offering. You can't get it with leave service. You can't get it with prayer. You can't get it with just uh, singing in the church. You can't get it with attending church. You can attend church a million years. You can't still get it. They are on common grace. What are these things? They are endowments. Things that when God drops in a human, on a human being, his whole world rocks. And then, they they these things are the things that makes God who he is there. That's what makes him wealthy, powerful, wise, and all that. He now shares it. Solomon went to Gibba. I think it's in verse 3 or what. Solomon loved the Lord. He went to Gibba to sacrifice there. But show verse 3 is important because what drove him is his love for God. You see that Solomon loved the Lord. 
verse 4, he went to give a sacrifice. What did he sacrifice? A thousand, nobody apart from David. A thousand burnt offering did Solomon offer on that altar. That's where somebody bring one cow. He's a big man. Somebody brought a thousand cow, one sacrifice. That's where he was starting. When you go to the day he dedicated the temple of God, he offered, I think it was 120,000 and then 22,000 sheep and how many goats and so on. That's a, a crazy human being. The person is kind of, but that's what is called sacrifice. Who was he looking for? What was Solomon looking for? One of those things you can't get with money. Now, watch. David has handed power to him. So a new governor, a new president has come. But there are problems. His mother was an illegitimate son, illegitimate woman in David's life. So Solomon was a bastard. The person that that office belongs to was Absalom. He was the first son of David. But now he wanted the like the prodigal son by overthrowing his father. So he dies. He, wants to, he wanted to get it by rebellion. Yet it was his. He didn't need to do that. It was going to be his nature and there was no contention. But rebellion made him to lose that and he also lost his life. So now that Solomon is dead, he has cleared the way for Adonijah. That's the next guy. And then Adonijah has brothers. They were all lined up. Now, this man goes to have an affair and then a child comes out and that first one dies, Solomon's first brother. And now he tries again with the woman and then Solomon was the result. And now David takes power and gives to Solomon. So you know, just like they contain will, they wait for you to die, they are going to contain this. And there are different means of removing him. Different means. I don't have the time, I can tell you some of them. For example, let me sh share one with you. The guy called Adonijah is alive, and he knew. So one day he got up and went to Solomon's mom, you know, Bathsheba, crafted something based on constitution and told her that will remove Solomon from office. Told her. He said, you know that my dad, David, left his last wife the prettiest girl in Israel, when he was old, they got that girl for him. But now David, that used to be Randy, couldn't move again. He, he didn't touch that girl until he died. He didn't touch her. She was a virgin, but she was the most beautiful girl. So that wife passed to Solomon. Yes, marry your father's wife if he didn't sleep with her. Because his, his age mate about that same, say, so you're a young girl, he's an old man, and one young girl. If he slept with her, it's her abomination. But now watch what happened. Solomon was sitting, and Adonijah, because if Adonijah takes that girl and consummates marriage with her, the person in power has lost office. Actually, what happened is that when Absalom was going against David, the wisest man, counselor David, had by the name of Ahitophel, counseled him. There is one thing you can do now, and you have defied your father, and there is no going back. Go on top of the building, the palace, collect David's wives, sleep with them, set up tent, let whole Israel watch while you are doing this. Once they see it, David is the throne. Now, but the one Absalom did was abomination because the people he went to sleep are the people his father has slept. That is enough to take his life. And when he did that, he didn't go for his own mother. Neither did he go for Solomon's mother or all those other mothers. What he went for is David's concubines, those young, young girls they keep as politicians. Sometimes somebody needs to explain to you the Bible. Oh. Some of you are reading this now. I don't know what you are getting. So that's how you defy 
and you establish yourself that you are the next authority. I don't know if you if you if you watch geography channels and all of that. When a lion, that's a king. Have you watched Lion King? If you have not, go and watch it. There are a lot of revelations inside that place. When a lion keeps a pride, the females, maybe there are six or twelve, and he runs his territory, that's a kingdom. If a male lion comes and wants to take over, he has to fight with that lion. But one of the things he must do in final whatever is that he kills off all the young cubs he got from these women and then go and start mating with all of them. Then he consolidates his kingdom. Until he succeeds in mating with them, he still not, they can team up and kill him. That's what is going on here. So I, 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 Adonijah comes from that back door. And Solomon's mother was naive, just a simple woman. And the Bible warns against simplicity. He said, ah, it's not a big deal. He said, hey, you are the one he listens to. Tell him to give me that. He said, first of all, this is what he told the woman. You know that the kingdom should have been mine. But because the Lord spoke and said to my father, give it to Solomon, he gave it to him. Sometimes, even people who are coming to inheritance are stupid upstairs, and you can lose it. But sometimes it's these rebels that are schemers. Say so he listens to you. Anything you ask him. So the woman walks in. He said, don't worry, it's done. See politics. He walks in. He said, king, live forever. Ah, and the, the man bows to the mom. He's the mom. He said, I have just one request. Don't deny me. He said, okay, you can ask. He said, you remember that your dad's last wife, the one you have taken already, your brother, you know he was the one that should have been here, but God now gave it to you. So you just use that to settle him. Solomon said, what? So you are this foolish. Ask him to come and take the throne. Now, don't you know what that means? Get out of here. If not that you are my mother, I will have asked for your head. That's a case where you should order somebody's. That's how they behave. They will order your debt. Your head is off. But this kingdom, this is not democracy. So if not that you are my mother. That's when the woman realized what she was, stupidity. There are other ways to collect that kingdom from Solomon. So uh, this guy, and that day, Solomon now put a death sentence on Adonijah. He just said, I will forgive you for this one, but this, this, the day. And of course, he sent Benai. Take him out. So this guy knew that I just collected seats. It's not secure. You know, sometimes they bring in a governor, he's running, but he knows he's not yet secure. There are court cases. There are whatever. So do you know what they do? Now that they have access to the security vote, now they have access to the government fund. Last time they were using their own fund to secure power. Well, now they have access. I'm not going to sit here and let this guy take me out. So you see some of them, a drive to this judge. The boot is loaded. You see, the, a drive to this other. And when he get the man said, it's a jury. A jury is a team of judges. I'm not the only one. And all you need is majority vote. You have one. So we have five that will decide your case. I, I would suggest uh, you go and see um, his honor uh, and then her honor. Uh, 
you know. And this one, just leave this one. It's very principled. He will not, it doesn't take. But go and see this and this. So that when I come there and I'm arguing, they are back up. And then that's what. And then that's how he loads the thing. If you see how many millions, hundreds of millions of naira and billions they spend on court case. What are they trying to secure? Something. And so they are burning money because they know what power can do. That anybody has power. You can convert little back to the money. Power and money are not anywhere near. With power, you can make everybody in a village billionaires. With power, you can make everybody in your village multi-millionaires. Power and money are not anywhere near. It's better that armed robbers rob you, take everything you have, set your house on fire, and leave you, but leave you with power. With power, you can capture them and execute all of them and recover everything. With power, there are so many things you can do. That's one of those values. When you want it, don't come to the altar and be shedding crocodile tears. It's sacrifice, my friend. That's how David got there. That's how Solomon. So he went to the altar in Gibeon. That's why he did. A man you see that does sacrifice is someone that has seen something. Put it up for them, Matthew chapter 13, that the kingdom of God is like a man that saw a treasure in a field. He saw a treasure hidden in a field. For the joy of that discovery, he runs away and sells all his properties to come and buy that field. That's how you do sacrifice. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which when a man has found, he hides it. And for the joy of he sells all that he had and buys that field. Why is he buying that field that's filled with gold? Gold is what is loaded on the ground, but they are planting cassava on the top. And the man that's planting cassava doesn't know what is inside. So he sells it to you. But you have you found out what is there. What is inside is oil. What is inside is diamond. That's what you're going to be mining. So you buy it. So when you're selling your house and doing all that, somebody thinks you are crazy after the race will count the mile. And so the man comes there and acquires that. And it doesn't matter the price they put for him. He's willing to sacrifice whatever it is to acquire. When he gets it, he fences, secures, registers. Then he brings the company and they start mining. Now he's the one that is owner of a major diamond mine in South Africa or a major gold mine. And now he converts back just a little of the value and build some of the biggest houses, do estates, and yet he hasn't touched because his wealth is still running. He just hid something. That's how the kingdom of God is. If you don't practice sacrifice, it's because you are blind. You don't know what true wealth is. It's on the altar of sacrifice that people get destinies that are secured, get an established destiny for themselves. If you a car is what you need and all those small, small things, don't come and disturb God. Show a seed and believe God for it. You can even go and buy it without doing that. A wise man places value on what God places value on. A fool makes last what God makes puts first. A fool puts it last. But there is no businessman like God Almighty. That's how God is anointing that I'm carrying. You need to see what I went through in ministry. That I tried suicide. Ministry drove me to suicide. I went to get hydrogen cyanide from chemistry lab in UNN to go and drink it. It was a lady, one girl, Amelia is her name, that saved me that day. 
They are pastors. And that's why some are beginning to turn to all kinds of manipulating, uh, going to look for native doctors. You cannot find in hell what heaven sells. Let me give you some things that sacrifice can get you. Some of those things. For example, Solomon, who has done that, and you know what happened. When he finished, he asked God. God now came up here and said, what do you want? He said, I need wisdom and understanding man to establish this covenant and rule Israel. You can go down. The Lord said, because you have asked this, because he has done the exchange, he said, I've given you wisdom, I've given you understanding like nobody on the earth. That's another thing. Whenever you want distinction that singles you out of the common thing, it's not available by coming to Christ. It's sacrifice that gets it. Look at Jesus, part of what he got. He has given him a name above what? Every name. That at the name of Jesus, how many needs? Every name. What got it for him? Ultimate sacrifice. It was his all. Her life is what he offered. Since God needs it to get humanity saved, he said yes. Even though at Gethsemane, he argued because whenever sacrifice is to be given, there will be that struggle. It's normal. But for the will of God to go, and he said yes, not my will, your will. What they gave him is a level of honor and nobody in the universe or beyond it has gotten a name above every name. But he now got seven other things. He got seven other things. You want to know what Jesus got? Please show it to them. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11. Whenever heaven now worships this person, this person that have lived here like you and I, but angels worship him. And I beheld, I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. The number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, thousands of thousands, verse 12. Saying with a loud voice. Everyone say, worthy. That's what sacrifice gets you. A man does that, he qualifies for certain things. Everyone say, worthy. You merited it, you deserve it. Worthy of what? Let's list them. There are seven. Worthy is the lamb that was what? What sacrifice did he pay to get become worthy of this thing? What? He was what? People want the glory. They don't want the cross. That's the problem. And people have not told them what is beyond the cross. If they tell you, you can pay the price. The Bible said... For the glory that was set ahead of him, he endured the cross and paid. There is something the father showed him that he was going to get if he would obey and do this. That's what anybody that sacrifices sees. When you see what this thing does, that's when you do it. These politicians, you see, they tell them, sacrifice your mother, uh, two people will die in your family. It's for power. Nobody sacrifices for nothing. What is the lamb that was slain? The one that died and paid the price. Look at what he received. Number one is what? Power. You see how to get power. Number two is what? Riches. Number three is what? Wisdom. That's the one Solomon collected. Then the Lord said to Solomon, I've given you the wisdom you asked, but now I'm adding something. Riches. Then I'm adding a third thing, honor, like no king on the earth. You will see your honor here. Can't you see it? After wisdom, there is what? Strength. They call it might. Then after might is what? Honor. How many of you want to be exalted by God? And he puts you in a pedestal that is beyond your peer. How many people want it? That's what gets you there. Listen now. My sister, listen. Papa Idahosa. Had TL when they finished crusade in Benin, they were going back to Lagos so that TL can catch that night flight back to the U.S. TL came with somebody, another minister that helps him. 
And so by the time they finished the service in Church of God mission and drove to the airport, they have finished boarding and locked. He blocked the aircraft and told them, and then they stopped and opened. When the aircraft locks, they don't open to board pass. They opened, and everybody was shouting and screaming at him. What kind of stupid, useless man is What is the meaning of that? He climbs up and said, greeted the pilot. He said, I have a missionary, and he's an apostle. He's still lost, boy. And he came with this man. They have been ministering. And their flight back is this night in Lagos. There is no other flight out of Benin. I need two people to step down and come down, travel tomorrow, so that TL can go. Because you know sacrifice when it inconveniences you. It's something where you do, you feel the pain. Don't think Jesus was smiling on the cross. All those pictures you see him smiling. No. And people were raining curses and shouting. And guess who the people were? The Christians were the ones cursing a man of God. He stood there. Dangote got up. And his friend got up. And he got up to go. He said, no, stop. Who are you, sir? Papa told me. He said, I'm a liquor dangote. What he's selling is commodities, buying and selling. He said, listen, because of what you have done now, you are going to be bigger than all your colleagues and overtake all those people that have been running up and down. You see where dangote is? Richest man in Africa, richest man in whatever. No, 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 no. God could do that even for a man that is not necessarily. Now, let me tell you. That thing he collected, they don't get it by. Hey, Lord, I love you. Hey, Lord, I love you. God is not a woman. He's not emotional. God is into covenant. God is into covenant. God is into covenant. You are worthy to receive strength, honor. Glory and blessing. What did you do? You know, if you go to Philippians chapter 2, the Bible said he humbled himself. You can show it to them from verse 9. Though he was in the form of he humbled himself and took the form of a servant. These are some of the things he did. Jesus just says it in some crazy way. He said, Jesus was transferred from heaven to earth. Not just that, he was transferred from earth to hell for three days for our sake. He was willing to do all that. Anyway, he humbled himself, took the form of a servant, became obedient, and was obedient unto death. The ultimate sacrifice is what he did. That is, sacrificing money is nowhere near that. Sometimes when people want power and they go to Satan, he starts asking for things like that. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. And giving him a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth. In case you really want to know what Jesus got. And that's the glory the Father showed him. If you do this, this is what is going to be yours. Show it to them, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. Let them see it. Daniel 7. Daniel was writing about it when nobody has paid for it. And this is the exchange they put before the Son of God, if you are willing to do this. For human beings, you will purchase redemption, but for yourself, this is what he was going to buy. I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man, that's Jesus, came with the clouds of heaven. That's when he has finished dying and ascended, and he came to the ancient of days. That's God the Father. And they brought him near before him. Now, this is what they gave him when he ascended to heaven. I was giving him, number one, everyone said dominion. dominion. Number two, everyone said glory. glory. Number three, everyone said kingdom. kingdom. That all people, nations, and language should serve him. So this, when you want a church to gain global influence, you sit down, you are struggling in ministry, you are looking, you want your church to rise, to have city-wide influence. Any man of God you see that has that, God thereby sacrifice. If wishes were horses, everybody would be riding on it. 
And that's why you can count on your two fingers double the people that are operating at that level in Nigeria. You don't know where people come from. You are after result. You don't want to know what price brought it. That small redeem that was nothing is what is on almost every nation on earth. If you like be a pastor and be struggling up and down, there are many pastors and so have died of hardship. If you want to move to another level, and his kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed. Go back to First King 3, what did God say to S S Solomon? No, after he has, he said, because you have asked this thing. Has asked on the, for understanding hearts to discern judgment. Yes, next verse 12. Behold, I have done according to your words. Get to that place where God asks, he responds to your words. I, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. So that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any rise unto thee. If you want those kind of status, the only thing I guess it is sacrifice and covenant. Next verse. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. Riches, both riches, and what? Honor. Honor is one of those ones he gave Jesus. Riches is one of those ones he gave Jesus. Now he's giving it to Solomon. Genesis 22. Just two more examples. I need to go. In Genesis 22 was Abraham. You know the story of offering Isaac. Please go there. The moment he has done that, the angel of God called him from heaven. Go down there. The angel of God called him from heaven and said, he called Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn. You sacrifice to extract an oath over your head from God Almighty. I have one that is functioning in my life. And then he explained to me that even though David was Abraham's seed, and when he killed Goliath, it was Abraham's covenant he was operating. Like you and I operate what Jesus achieved for us on the cross. But he through sacrifice, David secured a Davidic covenant that made the family of Judah experience mind-boggling things. Then he said, even though Solomon was David's son again, that what David has secured is even enough. But through sacrifice, he secured another place. That even though they were blessed with dominion and wealth, wisdom was not in their, not part of their lineage. It's not that people are stupid, but that Solomon went and brought that one and added. He said, what you are joining Christianity is what Jesus paid for. If you want to carve a place and become a patriot in my sight, carve your own place. Because Jesus said, there is such a thing as the fellowship of his suffering. There is such a thing as also carrying your own cross. There is such a thing as if you suffer with me, you will reign with me. Where you get to sacrifice, find that many people have not died to self. And if they want to do it, and it, turn it from paper, what they are reading, to experience. You see, when he gets to who will go to the cross, you see that God doesn't have many people. When he gets to who will, you see who will do of Isaac, you see why the Abrahams are single, that the uh, Davids are single, that the, the Jesus are single, the, the Paul apostle are single, that you see why 
even in a country like this with 100 million Christians, more than how many, over a million pastors, why are there a handful that carry kingdom dominion? Now you know what the truth is. It is not the pastor that asks people for money that is exalted. It's the one that sacrifices. The success in ministry is not for for reason. Abraham did that. I thought that's where you were in Genesis 22. God said, by myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless thee. If you want that thing, it's just like healing anointing. The person that has it, has it. The one that doesn't have it, doesn't have it. Doesn't matter what you. There's an empowerment, an endowment God gives a human being. What it does, it doesn't only bring finance, but what it does, anything he touches, prospers. It's an empowerment to prosper and succeed. Then he said the multiplying, I will multiply. If you want the multiplication anointing, then he said your seed will possess the gates of our enemies. If you want that thing that subdues enemies and opposition, when they carry it to battle, the other side has no chance. God sent me to Port Harcourt for one goal and one goal only. He's talking about 2020 and beyond. He said to me, it was an altar of sacrifice I found you. There are many that will be greater than you. There will be many that are like you. Go and find them for me. He said, I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. Pastor Nob, come. Come and give that First Chronicles chapter 29, please. Please put it up. Uh, 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 First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29. Come and give that record of David's giving. I thought it was Samuel, uh, Solomon that was the greatest giver in the Bible. I found that David sorted Solomon, even laid the foundation for his future and for the future of the family of Judah. Because he's also on the Davidic throne that Jesus is going to sit. If you want generational blessing, something that will not end with you like Abraham purchased. That's this what Barisawan Baha he said. He says, go to the spiritual realm and purchase for you power or kingdom or whatever anointing through covenant and sacrifice. He said that's what Piotr taught them. When Jesus talks about true riches in Revelation chapter 3. He said, people that were boasting that we are rich. He said, if you want true riches, come and buy, buy. The word he uses, buy. It's price he's talking about. He's not saying that money. He said, buy eye salve that your eyes may see. Buy white remnant that your nakedness may be covered. Then he said, buy. So in that parable of the just two, what Jesus was saying, use unrighteous money, this one that has less value, to exchange for things that can last, that can even be valuable even in heaven. Get eternal habitation with unrighteous money. To which I have prepared with all my heart for the building of Solomon's temple. You know, God told him, you can't build it. Your hand is touched with blood, but your son will build it. So instead of saying, since God said, I won't build it, let me go back home and sleep. He said, no, I'll finance it. The man is looking for something. What is he looking for? He wanted this thing he has got to remain in his lineage. Power, power, power. 
and dominion, he wants it to remain. Watch. I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God gold for the things to be made of gold, silver for the things to be made of silver, brass for the things to be made of brass, iron for the things to be made of iron, wood for the things to be made of wood. Of course, on stone, these are precious stones and stones to be set, glistening stones, all these precious stones of diverse colors and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. In what? Abundance. Then, yes, next verse. Moreover, I have set my affection to the house of my God. I have of my own proper goods of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared. Now, two levels of giving. He said, I have prepared for the house of my God all these precious stones. Then I went to my own personal account and also donated. So I said, which one did you do before? What happened is that when he set his heart to build the house of, of God, you know what he did? He went on crusades, war. This is the price. Jeopardizing you because in each war you could die there. Nation after nation. Each one he conquers, he will subdue them. He will gather their goals, their brass. Of course, please go to that part and read it for us. Let him see it. And he will subdue them and gather their brass, gather all their whatever. And when you come back with spoils of war, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to hear this. A man has finished taking such a risk and he comes home with spoils of war. Take 50%, give God 50%, that will be a sacrifice. Sir. He will dedicate all of them to the house of God. Then David put garrison in Syria of Damascus. Better. And the Syrians became servants to David. And this brought, war, yes? And brought gifts. And the Lord preserved David with whatsoever he went. And David took the shield of gold that were on the servants of Hadadezer and brought them to Jerusalem. And from Beta and from Berotai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took exceeding much brass. When Toy king of Hamad heard that David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer, then Toy sent Joram his son unto King David to salute him. You see, and when you take care of senior demons, the small ones just start, you know, surrendering by themselves. That's how it is. Uh, one day when we do teaching on deliverance, I'll come. I think I'm coming for a deliverance summit here next year. I will show you how it works. In deliverance, just take out the strong man all the other ones will just start coming out. If you remove a few of the strong man, leave uh, the smaller ones and leave the strong man, especially that one that speaks out, that does stubborn, that's the one you must take out. The other kings will surrender. So he didn't have to fight this one. He just came, sent his son. He said, oh yeah, please, we don't want problem. Take gold, take everything. Look at what they did. And they came to salute him, to bless him, because he has fought against Hadadeza and smiting him for Hadadeza had wars with Toy. Hadadezer used to defeat Toy. So David had defeated the one that used to defeat him. And now, and Joram brought with it, that's his son, vessels of gold, vessels of brass. Go on, Pastor. No, vessels of silver. Of Go silver. on. Which also King David did dedicate unto the Lord with the silver and the gold that he had dedicated of all nations which he subdued. Of how many nations? Hey! Nation he conquered, he carried all that to go and dedicate for. What about let me keep 20 countries, their own spoil, and donate 20? That would be nice. It's a sacrifice. And then when you finish dedicating all this, you went again to your personal account. What kind of crazy thing is that? Okay, go to the chapter that said, I prepared with all my heart. I went to great pain. And then let's look at the cost of, of God, one of the articles that he gave to God, yeah? First Chronicles 22, verse 14. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to look at what sacrifices you think. Did some of this chicken change will do. Watch what you want to be David. I'm a man after God. Watch now. Yes. 
Now behold in my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold. This one said, I have taken great pain. The other, the other translation calls it in my trouble. So he pains to sacrifice. I have prepared for the house of my God hundred talents, hundred thousand talents of gold, a million talents of silver, quantities of bronze and iron too great to be weighed. Wood and stone, you may add to them. He said the list continues. Convert just one of the articles, the gold. Yes, let's see what the value looks like today. Okay, okay. A talent of gold equals to 33 kilograms of gold. And uh, in 2018 gold market, a talent of gold is bought for $1.4 million dollars. That's 218. 216 it was 1.25. It's still increasing in value. 218 is 1.4. 1.4 million. Which any of them you like used to multiply. Google it. You can check it. You can even know today's price on your internet immediately. Yes? So a hundred thousand talents of gold will be hundred thousand multiplied by one point four million, which gives you a hundred and forty billion dollars. This is dollars, not naira. See the value in Naira, 51.1 trillion Naira. And remember, I just took out one article. I didn't take all of them. Just one. So you want to talk about men that have worked with God. The way you say, Jesus has my heart. What does he really have is your lips, his lip service. It's the gospel that is to save, that is starved. It is the thing. Okay, for example, now we're talking about Center for National Development. If you have it here, that's where young people in Port Harcourt will go get themselves empowered things that will give them, change their life, not, not just vocational skill or how to make soap. It's when good is to be done that is now starved. But evil, evil. If you want to go and sleep with dogs or release pornography, such things get you phones. No, a million times, no. It is righteous people that finance righteousness. It's kingdom people that finance the kingdom, but they have to learn to come up to this level. This is what a human being gave. In that first Chronicles chapter 29, he was writing about the things God has in his possession that he gives people in exchange for sacrifice. He listed 10 things there, and that's where I close. In first Chronicles, go to where David praised the Lord, go to first Chronicles 29, and David, after they have given, for the temple, David began to appreciate the Lord, and this is what he said. Proverbs. David blessed the Lord before all the congregation, and David said, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Then he said, verse 11, Thine, O Lord, is what? Greatness. Is the somebody one that? I want to see what God gives in exchange for sacrifice. There are certain things he has. There are 12 major ones. Here's 10 of them are listed here. 12 major ones. Another one is power. You know, it's your Bible that said, once has he spoken, twice have I heard, that power does what? Belongs to God. You want it. You don't need to go to the devil. Go to the altar. Thine, O oh Lord, is the glory. He gave Jesus this one. And Jesus said, the glory of giving, I have given to them. Jesus wants to give it to you and I. Thine, O oh Lord, is a victory. Do you have enemies that are stronger than you and your connection, your strength can't with you? It might be even sinful things that have bound you. You have repented, you have cried. 
to get free? Do you want deliverance? Sacrifice. Is it foundation in your family? Certain things happen. Nobody gets married. Nobody is able to rise and stay. Or even everybody is held down. Do you want to break it? Do you want to cause the giants to be subdued under you? That naturally you don't have a ability to conquer. Sacrifice. Thine, O oh Lord, is the majesty. For all that is in heaven and on earth is thine. This is the one that you call riches, possession. What is material things? Now, and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom. That's another one. It could be political. It could be territorial dominion. A church wants to. Or a business man wants to stamp his business. It becomes a national phenomenon. Thine, O oh Lord, for thou art exalted as head above all. Go on, verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee. Those are the two he added to Solomon after giving him wisdom. Now I'm showing you what true wealth is. Let's stop this materialistic thing that we think about. We are trapped in the natural and are giving up more important things. Like, thine is a both riches and honor come of thee. Thou reignest over all, whether it's political leadership or whatever. Thy hand in thy hand is power. Another one is might. In thy hand is power to make great and to give strength to all. You want greatness. There's a man that has it all and he doesn't eat it. He wants to bestow it on people. For there's another one that he gives. He puts it on a girl. It can be the ugliest girl in Port Harcourt. And that will give her what the prettiest one can get. Don't you see pretty, gorgeous ladies on marriage? Don't you see them doing prostitution? Why will a girl like you be standing in the dark, hanging around for men? For how much? 5,000, 10,000, 50,000. I don't know what they charge in port. That thing that makes somebody come up with a product, the product becomes a household name. He has it. He's not eating it. He's somebody to bestow it on. That thing that creates a big gate. That thing that makes that a thousand people have talent. They are carrying music. But Sinaj stands out. Frank Edward stands out. Go and see now. There are guys with voice. Frank Edward's voice, no rich. Sinai itself doesn't even have voice. But something is on that girl. And I, Frank is the one I've got. If you see what this boy does, you see why you are not the one? Because you can't do that, you can't sacrifice. Oh, you have his talent. You sing better than him. But where is your talent? Carrying CD up and down. If you go to Hollywood, there are different other world organizations, different ones, just to have line lights, just to be a star. And what Satan asks them is your soul. That's the sacrifice. Sometimes it's life of members of your family. But a man is a 419. God is a covenant keeping God, my friend. This morning, God sent me to Port Harcourt for the next generation of men that will be in charge. 
in charge in the industries, in charge in the entertainment industry, in charge in politics, in charge in business, in charge in ministry, in charge in contract, in charge. Bow down your heads, everyone. 